So welcome back to the shop. I'm Colin. Uh, now, if you follow some of the same uh, YouTube channels that I do, uh, you're probably aware that uh, Keith Fenner on his channel, at Turn Rate Machine Works, has uh, uh, made available a kit of uh, raw material to construct his shaft roller kit. Uh, I've been wanting a set of shaft rollers for some time and just never got around to making them. So, when this kit uh, became available, uh, oh my, I forgot his name. Uh, Mr. Rob Townsend, uh, up here in Canada, had decided to become the distributor, I guess, for, uh, for, uh, for kits. And he purchases the material, uh, cuts it all up into the appropriate sizes, his packages, and sends it out. And uh, when he decided to do that, of course, uh, I think I was number one on the list. <laughs> I, I, I wanted to get into this kit pretty bad, so showed up in the last couple of days, and uh, so I'm going to take the evening and uh, start to prep most of the pieces and get it ready. So I've already spent the evening uh, prepping most of the pieces. Uh, we did a bunch of trimming, got the mill scale off, all the pieces are cut to the length on the outside. Uh, pretty much boring work. I did record some of it. I'll include it in the video, of course. Uh, but I plan to record when we get into the design changes I'm going to do and the way I'm going to assemble my kit as, pro as probably compared to the way somebody else may do it. Uh, that part I will record and share with you because I had planned to I had planned to bolt the thing together as opposed to weld. small design change in the pivot pin here. I haven't uh, finalized it yet. I'm staring at it for the last three hours trying to figure out what I want to do there. And uh, But as I work through it, I'll record segments of it and uh, we'll have a project video at the end that I can share with you. Okay, so it's after hours again. We got our door locked and keep the riffraff out. Then we're going to make another go at our uh, set of right rollers. Uh, we ended off last night, we had uh, cleaned all the mill scale off, uh, pretty much all the parts, uh, everything is cut to length with the exception of the pivot pins and that's because I had decided what I wanted to do there. Uh, I had a box of uh, quarter 20 by 1 inch cap screws left over from 10 years of ATVs. So I think what I'm going to do with mine is I'm going to do a countersunk screw through the back to hold on the end pieces. We'll do a pair of those in the back on each end. Uh, so that secures this part. We'll do our bore for our pivot pin on these and uh, for the end of our tube I think I may do a press fit into the, into the blocks. Uh, cut a slot or a couple of holes in, in either side and do a plug well to secure them into the tube. And uh, then we'll start work on the uh, on the center tube and get our uh, cutouts done for our bearings. So today's mess cleaned up. Do I need that this time? Nah, we just use the end of the vise. So we'll put one on that side. We'll stick another guy here as a as a spacer. this in with the end of the vise. And cinch it down. Now five eighths from that size I'm going to have to pull these parallels out. 
Might be easier said than done. Don't want to come out. You were down tight on the parallels. Okay, so let's get a uh, get an edge finder and uh, get ourselves aligned up here. some dimensions. So according to our diagram we should be ancient three-eighths from the bottom. midway on our piece. So that should be easy enough. There's two, three. Seventy-five. So let's do the bozo check I guess. Put this right there. So we should be able to uh, drill and bore these, uh, just take one out, put in the next one, line it up without moving anything. We should be able to do the four of them fairly quickly. Okay, so here we go. down to there first.
Okay, so we'll get the fuel truck out of here. Get in our boring head. Come on, find your keyway. Somewhere around there, sounds tasty. So we're looking for sort of 624. And you never know, we just may find it. 576. Six oh eight. So ten more is eighteen. Not bad. It's a couple of tenths over 624. I don't know if you can see that or not, but I can live with that.
Okay, so what I'll do is I'll uh, I'll blast some holes in the other three, and uh, we'll go and stick them in the press and get them uh, assembled. So we got our blocks ready. Uh, we're just going to take our uh, our pins and we stick them in the three jaw. We're going to face and put a little bevel on one end of them. The back side is going to be in the inside. We won't worry too much about that because it's never going to be seen. And uh, then we'll head on over to the press. Turn on a bit of feed. Finish these up, we'll head over to the press. So here's the setup. We got our 625 pin, the 625 or 624 hole, and uh, we want to press this through here and we want to leave half inch. We're just going to go through the 3 8 inch flat bar. I'm going to leave a half inch that way we can adjust it and have a bit of float on the rollers so not everything is not tight and binding. Uh, so I just made up a quick aluminum spacer for when I press it through, I'll just press it flush with the spacer and we're done. Let's see if we can manage to get this cheap ass press to align sensible. Because it likes to move around a little. bottom and we'll try our we'll try our spacer. Hopefully we can get aligned well enough. Unlikely. out of there. So I used aluminum so it wouldn't go on the pin. Okay, we're touching so that should be our half inch. Go to scale, check it out. Close enough for the uh, for the fancy girls. Okay, three more to do.